heard it, got, got a bunch of ash, and uh, I, I'm the benefit of it, beneficiary of it. And I have a pile of ash, thick planks, about this high, and about this, I have enough ash to last me the rest of my life. I have, I, and you can make, so that top is made out of an ash tree that, that uh, Where do you live? So basically, as I say, this is very abstract. That comes cart. This is showing it, kind of carved. And so you know, you got the teeth there, the nostril there, the eye there, elbow there, paw there, ear there. And after a while, you can kind of get to recognize these things. But initially, when I started looking at this art, I couldn't tell a bear from a wolf, from a beaver, from a you know, from a raven. After a while, you get to know what to look for and realize they can be placed not necessarily in their natural position. But um, as with my totem pole, it's quite all right to have the back of the animal and the front of the animal both on the same thing. We have the beaver's tail and the beaver's teeth both on the, both on the pole facing forward. That's okay. <laughs> That's good for me. <laughs> I can say I, even when I screw up, I can say I, I had it to be that way. <laughs> Uh, so Frank, the back of the box, is it the same? No. <laughs> we go reverse it. The back of the box is the tail. So that thing, it was wood burn our initials in, and as I say, it was mainly Steve's design. I got him to sign the uh, piece of paper here, then I transferred his initials to the box and put it in, and there's me starting to burn my initials in. Um, again, I put uh, wild base stain on there before I did anything else. Uh, started to paint it, um, the painting, um, and then I, on this on this one, I put tongue oil sealer on it and a coat of uh, low, low gloss tongue oil um, as the final finishing. Because it's not really going to be outside much, so I didn't feel compelled to put spark orange on it. Uh, there's the completed front, there's the completed back. Now, what, what I'm going to do next with bedwood boxes? Well, I really, really, really like uh, sorry, uh, yellow cedar. It's, it's real, almost impossible to get here. But I did get in contact with a guy at Heidegwai, and he wanted some maple. So we did an exchange. I, I mailed that to him, and he, he mailed me that bundle of, it's about this high, of um, yellow cedar. I mailed him a somewhat bigger bundle of, of material hard maple. We're both happy. Frank, what was the original purpose of the bent box? Oh, they took everything. They, they were, the people, when they were traveling in their canoes, stored stuff in them. For instance, this one has a blanket in it right now. Okay. But they would store food in it? And... They store food, they cook food in it. They would, they would put water in because they're watertight, drop hot rocks in it, and cook the food. And there, see, there's, this is being... <laughs> So essentially, it was their storage uh, for stuff. So rather than pottery, they're using wood. wood. That's right. Yeah. I mean, they, they grew up these wonderful cedar trees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they would just use joinery to keep a watertight box. Yeah. Well, three sides is pretty good because it's. You know, it's, there's no there's no joint. But you got the bottom too. You got the bottom. Yeah. You're good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. They. I, I expect that's watertight. I haven't actually tried it. Right. But I I, I expect it is. Uh, what's next? Got wood boxes. Um, what I hope to do uh, next year is build myself a steamer cabinet. Not as big as the one you saw, but big enough, and make at least one bed, one box. And I want to um, have the theme as a legend. The uh, sun and the moon. There was this uh, way back when. There were there was a bad person who was keeping him in a box, and so the world was in darkness. 
And uh, the raven, being the trickster, came down and took them out of the box and put them up in the sky for us to have light. And so the theme of my box is going to be centered on the raven, the sun, and the moon. And what I hope to do in the middle of the top is actually do a stained glass, which has got the raven holding the moon. And so the sides will have the raven, some, some variation of the raven and the moon, and then the, uh, the, the middle of the top will have this stained glass in it. So as I said, I want to combine both those eyes. Turtle panel project. Uh, why carbon panel? Uh, well, it took me 35 hours to do the totem pole. It took me about 130 hours to do the Bentley box. Um, uh, I want to do something that takes a little less time. Uh, and um, so one side of a bedwood box is kind of like a panel. Uh, and it's going to save me a whole lot of time if I don't even have to make the box in the first place. All I have to do is carve one side of the panel. So that's, that's, why, well, that's why a panel. Um, what wood? Now we talked about wood. The best wood is BC Yellow Cedar. Um, there are some ready available alternatives. Uh, BC Red Cedar, not free, of course. Balsa wood works, works well. And uh, not free pine. Those are the three of the other ones I've used. And But I happened to get really lucky. I was up at Century Now Lumber about five years ago. And had these big planks, about two inches thick, about eight inches wide, and about 10 feet long, of something called Abadir which is, a, I think, a threatened South American species of some sort. Anyway, they were, they were clearing these things. And um, it's white wood, and it's just absolutely clear. And it's pretty good for, it's not as good as some of these for carving, but it's pretty good for carving. I have a lifetime supply of that stuff, too. <laughs> so, uh, how, how did I do this? That's a piece of the Avenir. I'm re it on my bandsaw. Uh-oh, a power tool. Uh, and, um, and what I did was the Avenir I found warped a bit. So I stuck a, uh, a Baltic birch uh, piece of plywood on the bottom, glued it to it, and that pretty well prevents any kind of warping. And you don't even see the front anyway, so that's, that's going to be okay. Um, in this case, I wanted a turtle. So, I drew half a turtle <laughs> because it's going to be in the mirror image. And again, mostly what I'm doing is using all those symbols that we talked about. The only thing semi-realistic is the head. And really, by drawing a semi-realistic head, that's really cheating. The, the West Coast people wouldn't do that, or at least they seldom do that. They, the, um, well, I did it. It's put tracing paper onto the, pa onto the panel. And if you don't feel like actually drawing, there are lots and lots and lots of designs on the internet. Now, you probably shouldn't take one and just use it as it is, but you can take it and get some inspiration. And uh, so there's a frog, a bear, and a raven. Um, but there's countless uh, designs on there. Again, I talked a little bit before about the uh, carving tools. This is the set of tools I use for my, my turtle panel, and that, that's all I use. There's that set of knives you see there. You see the various handles just interchangeable. Um, the next step, um, I traced, uh, the, uh, I traced on there. It was really a parting tool, which is a six millimeter, 70 degree parting tool. I used that, but the majority of the lines were just Cut, cut using that, and it really is very easy. It just, what you do is you make sure that the tool doesn't completely go into the wood. You've always got each edge out a little bit from the wood, and you guide it with one finger and push with the other, and in, in it, if the wood's good enough, it's almost almost like that. <laughs> um, yellow cedar is certainly like that. Avenir, not quite so much, but it's still pretty easy to carve. Um, and for the background, I just scooped out adjacent uh, um, scoops with a scoop. And um, that's pretty easy to do with Avadir and Balsa. You really can go in with a scoop and come up like that on a nice smooth um, 
uh, shape there. What the happened here, not quite so much. Sometimes I'd have to go down and cut in and then reverse the tool, come back, or I'd get splintering coming out of it. But you get used, it gets, gets, gets pretty easy. Um, okay, I coat the powder with, this time I coated it, first of all, with tongue oil sealer. That's some, some, a little bit different. Uh, I used tongue oil sealer after the fact on my, on my box. Uh, then I paint it with acrylic paints. And a few Haida painting traditions I'm going to talk about just briefly. Uh, the colors are restricted to the colors that are pre-contact with European. Uh, black, which they got, well, all of these they pretty well chewed up salmon eggs and spit them out as a binding agent and then added something. So for black they'd add charcoal. For brownish red they'd add um, iron oxide. For white they'd add ash. And for a blue group, if something of a blue grain range, it would be copper oxide. Sometimes they use urine as well. Um, I didn't do any of that. I used I went and cheated and bought the stuff. <laughs> I, I actually talked to some people when I was out on the course with Steve, who had actually experimented with doing with making some of the paints. Uh, they said it didn't really work as well as the products. <laughs> um, the uncarved surfaces traditionally are painted. And um, there's usually uh, a um, either black or brownish red contiguous surface that's painted. Uh, I'll show you just what I'm talking about. See, there's a contiguous black surface. Uh, they all, all of those, all that black's joined with all the rest of it. So on a real carving, you would stick, you would do that. Then in the the, in the parts that you actually carve out you would either do them um, uh, blue-green or um, white or leave them un un unpainted altogether. And, and that's, that's pretty well the a real uh, Haida would, would stick to those rules. No, I didn't stick to those rules. I used uh, tan paint, which I've never seen on any other objects, and I used green paint on a, on a on an uncarved surface, but it's only supposed to be used on carved surfaces. All of my carved surfaces are left unpainted. So any, anything that was carved has not had any painting in it. So I just broke some, I mean, it's my, my turtle, I can do what I want. <laughs> I'm not claiming it to be authentic or anything. Uh, then I put uh, tongue oil sealer and two coats of polymerized tongue oil on, uh, as a preservative that I, that I framed it. And that took about 12 hours. <laughs> so there's a whole lot less time than the others. Now I'm going to turn this over to Ethan. Do you want to use that or this, Ethan?